one of the most honorable recognitions is that Ya allows his remnant, his book here, the chosen of the elect. We may gather on a Shabbaton, the offer unto our Abba, the tremendous offerings of praises to esteem the excellence of his power, his throne, and to identify him as the most excellent and the only most high. There is none like him. There is none that can compete with his authority, his power, his might, for he stands alone. For there is no other creator. Lords, many. Gods, many. But there is only one mighty one. And he stands in the power of his name. For in that name is the testimony, the idza, the words that only proceed from his love, his heart, to express whom he is, the power of whom he is, and that we as a nation may identify with him and him alone. Not some superficial name or the homogenized names that are created by many of the splendor groups today that think they have the excellence of truth and their life, lifestyles, the habitation, it's not worth a damn. It has no weight in it at all. It is all jav, vanity. We greet you all, our listeners that have joined us on the Shabbatons, we say to you all, Shabbat Shalom, Mishpecha Yisraya, greetings to all the family of Yisraya scattered abroad throughout the nations of the earth. We greet you all in Yahshua's mighty name as we gather here in this little simple bayat, only a few of us, so don't feel as though that you are law. And as we gather here to esteem the might and the power of his excellence, to rejoice, to dance, to sing in the Edus, the testimony of his power, testimony of his strength, the testimony of whom he is, because we have the living substance in us. Greater is the power of the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. See, that's the living su substance of Yah. We must have the testimony, not just in verbiage, not just in words. It must be a substance of a lifestyle that represents the totality of the testimony of Yahshua, which is, was, and now is the word of Yah. So we must live that way, Yisraya, despite the encroachment of hell. So we greet you all, our friends, our listeners, our supporters, and you that are extortioners as well. We want to greet you all in Yahshua's mighty name. We appreciate all that you all do. We appreciate our act like... Ah, uh, Tayonia there in Memphis, greetings in Yoshua's name, as well as our Ak Davis there in California as they gather in the early hours of the morning to, to fellowship with us. And they will be in service all day until this evening. He will feed them. He will make sure that every need uh, is attended to. He's a very precious man, and one day we will all get a chance to meet him. Very precious very supportive, Ach, as well as our Ach Tayonia. Uh, very supportive. We greet him as well as our Ach and our Zachin David there, Johnson, David Johnson Sr., as he calls himself, there in the Baltimore area, our Achot, uh, our Ima Miriam, and our Achot uh, Marianne there in Cleveland or in the Indian area, our Achot Debbie there in, in um, where is that? In Scotland. Here we had one that loved me more than he loved water from Scotland. And then he turned away from me. And then Yah caused the heart of a simple woman that sends offerings every week all the way from Scotland. And to bless the labor of Yah's work here, Israel. So we greet you all 
Wherever you're listening, always out of Achmi Chaya, his son Zephonia and his Isha, Mikayala and all Yisraya, we greet also the Hart family, Akhtesner, and all of those that are gathered there in Florida, our Oho Dayan, there in Florida, we greet you all. There is not many, but the few of you all, if I negate to recognize you, it's not that I am not recognizing you because the value of your support, our Ochot Kim and her husband, Kevin, there in, uh, uh, as they are faithful in their gifts. She is a house mother, and yet he allows her to send offerings and gifts consistently, continuously. And he is the only one that works, but he does not. And she went to him in the proper way, can we send a gift? To Riach Dawid Israel, because this is where my strength comes from, from those ach laboring in Torah, that it may give me strength of assurance, and that it may revive me. So we greet you all, we greet you, our friend, ach Hayel Birmin, there in Arkansas, your family, and all of you, our friends, we greet you all. And you, my enemies, that tends to spy on me, we welcome you. We will feed you bread today. If your enemy is hungry, then you feed them. And we will not negate to feed you bread, our friends, our enemies. You are the house of Israel. Yeah, we greet you. Yoshua is mighty name. What a blessed assurance it is to be live on this Shabbat. I have no complaints at all. I'm not concerned with any ailment or pain or anything that caused me discomfort. I am alive. I have breath in my bosom. And from the grave we cannot esteem nor exalt our Abba. And he has granted me another day and for that I do rejoice greatly. To see the, the sun rising every day or the strength to arise out of the beds and whereby my limbs may not have the fullness of strength and i may arise with some awkwardness but i'm alive and so he grants unto me another day to lift him up there are no circumstances in life no situations uh, that i will allow to impel to destroy that nature that only comes through the witness of Yahshua hamashiach for he has paid the ultimate price for all Yisrael. And for that I am eternally appreciative for Almighty Yahweh. For by the shedding of the dark, and without that, there is no remission of our sins. And so I am appreciative unto my Abba for all that he has done. Hallelujah. I rejoice in the comfort and the security of that. I rejoice in the assurance of that, that brings life, produce life, that enable the high yield, the strength to fight in the battle. And he grants unto me the battlements to fight in the midst of the great battle and the tyranny of darkness that tries uh, to denounce the power of his Torah in my love. So I stand. It will not be the circumstances that deter me from Yah. I will not be deterred because of situations and allegations uh, and misconceptions or evil conceptions uh, that are favorable to one's mind. I will not be deterred. I will not falter. I will not no fall to the wicked. The man falls in the midst of the wicked and uh, allow the wickedness to subdue him, uh, then literally. He has no strength at all. He has not the Koraka or the wisdom of Torah. I will not fall. I will not succumb. I will not submit. I will not be subdued. I make my boast in the power of the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. Because through the power of that true witness, not that I cannot, I can do all things. I can, as, uh, I can fashion my mind, I can fashion my heart, I can fashion my will, my desire, my pleasure. I can do it all through the power of that testimony. 
And I certainly will not be uh, impeded from that uh, through this pleasuring weak will uh, and desire that is driven by the components of a, 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 a mind that is carnal and that is enmity against you. I will not succumb. I will not be subdued by that. I will not give in. Zakin Yuramiya remind us that because we met, we that are weak, let us declare the strength of Yah. We that are dull, poor, on ye, having not the strength, the wisdom of Yah. Let us say that we are Esha, we are rich. We have the spontaneity of the response of rejoicing when we hear that name. We rejoice and shout in the power of that name, for it is a great name. He is our Abba. And there is none other beside him, so rejoice in that. Hallelujah. Greetings, Israel. I want to teach, I want to do it in a way that is precise, the mechanism, the mechanics of it. There is a thorough understanding of the president that is set before us and the mind, the leba, the thinking of Almighty Yahweh. As we are entered into a time, a yam, a day, that unless we have a hedge fund, we're not going to survive. Unless we have a hedge fund, we're not going to survive. I want to read to you today, Yisra'ya, that are gathered in Yahweh's congregation in the physical state. You that have joined us by via the live stream, audio or visual, you that may hear this message, this teaching, in some latter time, wherever you are. I want to read the letter that I sent out to our subscribers and those that frequently or infrequently listen to us. And this is the letter I sent out. I want to inform you because we must understand that we need a hedge fund today. We need a hedge fund. I want to read this letter. It says, Shalom and Yahweh's Berechaya blessings, Yoshua HaMashiach, rest upon you all, Yisra'ah. May Yah grant us all his supreme wisdom in the matters that are before us in the midst of this most epic time of great battles that he has placed us in. This battle is beyond our ability to subdue by our own nature of our own wisdom. We are fastly approaching one of the most decisive times of Yah's truth according to the Torah. To Heliam, Psalms 37, 39. But the deliverance of the Sadiq, the righteous, it is of Almighty Yahweh. He is the strength in the time of Sarah, great agony, great pain. Great mental oppression, suppression, and wealth suppression as well. One of the most pressing issues upon the nation of Israel is the concern for the great financial downturn. And many are experiencing this at this time. How do we as a people, a nation, deal with uh, the financial struggles that we may, in this time, uh, overcome? We must find the solutions uh, to this question. How do we as a nation uh, of the people of Yah overcome uh, the great rage of Almighty Yahweh 
that he has raised up against his people to make his power known unto the Goim, the nations of the earth. We must search for the answers to these types of questions. I want to inform you that Almighty Yahweh wants Yisrael to begin to put their monies in one of the most powerful hedge funds that one cannot even speculate on the great returns. That you can be rewarded by doing so. The returns are beyond your wildest imagination and concepts of what a true investment of one's finances will reward them. Gold, silver, and the precious metals. Explanation mark. Three of them. I want you to join me, Reach David Yisraya, for two special teachings regarding the Shabbat 2 16, 2013, and 2 23, 2013, for some of the most riveting information and true wisdom of the most profitable hedge funds that you cannot and will not lose one promise uh, of the rewards. I have information that if you invest, you will be able to provide a wealth that will be unmatched by any other hedge funds. Please, Yisrael, inform your family member, members, to join the live broadcast on the Shabbat for a powerful, dynamic teaching on this great hedge fund. Instructions as to how to join us. Emphatically, quote, you will not lose, Yisrael. I will promise you, Yisrael, that your home and all that are with you for this teaching will not be the same after this instruction. Gather your family, friends, and even strangers to hear this message of the great wealth that will come, starting from the throne of the almighty Yahweh and Yahshua, if you invest in this hedge fund. I am looking forward to this wonderful teaching to bless Yisrael with the abundance of Yah's great wealth and Yahshua HaMashiach. May Yah grants you his wisdom in this truth in Yorkshire. I do look forward for you to join us for these teachings. Shabbat Shalom. Riach David Yisraya. What a statement. One of the most powerful, profitable hedge funds. An investment that is beyond astronomical figures that we can equate to. It's beyond the resolution of our mind. I want to read two articles for us. It is important. I want you to hear Yisrael. I want to take somewhat of a scholar approach today. With the tremendous changing in the world's economy and the environment, that our monies may be hedged. And there shall be more than wealth to supply the riches unto the nation of Yisrael. I want you to hear this. Just open your ozen, your ears to hear. This is an article from writers of uh, Reuters News Service. It says this, be attentive. Quote, tech, technological 
billionaires bank roll go rush to mine asteroids. Google's executive Larry Page and Eric Schmidt, the filmmaker James Cameroon, among those bank rolling a venture to survey, to survey the eventual extraction of precious metals and rare minerals from asteroids that orbits near Earth, the company said on Tuesday. Planetary Resource, based in Bellevue, Washington. Unquote. I want to impose here, this is the city where Microsoft, Bill Gates, he lives in this city and Microsoft is also the headquarters is there quote initial focus will be on the development and selling extremely low cost robotic spacecrafts for surveying the mission the demonstration mission of orbit around the earth is expected to be launched within two years said company's co-founder Peter Diamondus and Eric Anderson. Planetary resource aimed to open deep space exploration to private industry, to the hedge funds, to invest. Much like the $10 million Ansara X Prize competition, which Diamond has created, the prize will galvanize the emerging commercial human spaceflight industry uh, was awarded in 2004 to scale compositive uh, Spaceship One for the first flight beyond the Earth's atmosphere by a private development spacecraft, uh, commercial, uh, commercial space flights were expected to begin next year. Planetary resource first customers are likely to be science agencies such as NASA as well as private research institution. Within a certain amount of years, however, the company expects, expect to progress from selling observation platforms in its orbits around the Earth to prospecting service. Is plans to tap some of the thousand asteroids that pass relative close to the Earth and extract the raw material, gold and silver, and all of the platinum and cobalt that they have determined that are in the asteroids. And so the billionaires are investing now. So this hedge fund that has been opened, those that invest now, what a tremendous prospect of reward. Not all missions will return precious metals and minerals to the earth in addition to the mining uh, for plat platinum and other precious metal. The company plans to tap asteroids uh, for water supply, orbiting fuel deposit, which could be used by NASA and other for robotic and human space mission. We have long viewed, we are not expecting this company to be an overnight financial home run. It's going to take a little time, Anderson said in an interview with writers. The real, real payoff will come in the decades away. Will come from the mining of asteroids for the platinum, for the precious metals and the rare minerals. If we simply look back historically at what caused humanity to make the largest investments in exploration and in transportation, it has been going after the resources. Whether it's the Europeans going after the spice roots of the American settlers looking toward the west for gold, oil, timber, or large lands, they have always pursued that. Those precious resources cause people to make huge investments. 
unquote, the billionaires can see beyond the natural spectrum of us people. Because they have the technological association, the wherewithal, to go beyond the realm that our minds never ponder. Quote, the precious resources call people to make huge investments in ships, railroads, and pipelines. Looking to space, everything we hold of value on the earth, everything that we hold to value on the earth. Quote, call everything that we hold to value on the earth. I want that to resonate for a second. Not some of the things. Quote, everything we hold to value on the earth, metals, minerals, energy, real estate, water, these most precious and valuable commodities. It is near infinite and in quality in space. A great hedge fund to invest in. The opportunity exists to create a company whose mission is to be able to go and basically identify and access some of those resources and ultimately figure out how to make them available where they are needed. This was Dimodus, as he replies. Dimodus and Anderson declined to discuss how much money has been raised for the venture so far. In addition to Google's Billionaires, Page, and Schmitz, and also filmmaker Cameroon, planetary resources investors includes for a catch, a catch of great wealth and powerful luminaries upon the earth that can see the vision greater than us. Not only these men of astound, impeccable investment accumulate, but also Microsoft, chief software engineer or software architect, Charles Smithiel. Charles Smithiel, a two-time visitor of International Space Station also, Google founding director, K. Ram Shimra Ram, and also Ross Perot Jr., all multi-billionaires with a portfolio, a hedge fund that rivals nations in wealth. And an impeccable, august body of investments, wisdom that nations desire and try to pry that from their minds. Quote, planetary resource also declined to discuss specifics about how and when asteroid mining will begin. To give us an example, quote, a 30 meter long, which is around 100 feet. That's what 30 meters equate to, around 100 feet. Asteroid can hold as much as 25 billion to 50 billion dollars worth of platinum at today's prices. This article from Writers World, it was edited by 
Tom Brown, and by Lisa Schumacher to give us some kind of numeric financial association with this investment. It's going to take a moment around five, ten minutes to read this article, but I want to give you some insight. We as a nation, we need a hedge fund. This is by BBC News. This is online science. The editor is David White House. What a peculiar name. Quote, the most detailed study of asteroids show that it contained precious metals worth at least 20,000 billion. To express that in numerics of terms that we cannot even equate to, that would equate to around $2 trillion. To invest, to be the pioneers of such a venture. Now these are euros here. So that would equate to around close to three trillion American dollars. The data, the data were collected last December by the Near Earth Asteroids. Um, Renaissance near spacecraft, which passed close uh, to the asteroid uh, Eras. Have you all heard that name before, Eras? You heard that on one of the stories that play all the time. Eras. It provided an unprecedented look at one of the mountains of rock that flies around the solar system. The first conclusions from that encounter are now published in journal Science. This means that Eras is a gold mine in space. Gold, silver, platinum, cobalt, these powerful minerals. We need a hedge fund, Israel. And to be the pioneers of such monumental venture, we create a wealth that is beyond the expectation of any people in a nation. That means that Eros is a gold mine in space as well as a platinum mine, a zinc mine, and many more minerals besides. Eros is a typical of stony meteorites that contains or it contains about 3% metal. With the known abundance of the metals in the meteorites, uh, even a very cautious estimate uh, suggests uh, 20 million, 20,000 million tonnage of aluminum. You hear that? 20,000 tonnage of aluminum, along with similar amounts of gold, platinum, and other of the most rarest of metals. In the 2,900 cubic uh, uh, kilometers of Eros, uh, there is no more aluminum. Do you hear that? In this span of around a mile, we will give it that, a mile in circumference, around four square miles or less. There's more aluminum. There is more gold and silver and zinc and other base and precious metals that have ever been extracted in the history indeed could even be evacuated from... Uh, the upper layers of the earth cross, in essence, unquote, just on that small diameter of space, 
There is more precious metals, golds and platinum and cobalts that can be extracted from one asteroid than in the history of the gold excavation from the earth from the day that they excavated gold, silver, and the rare metals just on that small space. If I can give you an example, to leave from my door, to walk to the end of our property here on the left side and back, that's one mile. So can you imagine within the scope of that, the great wealth? And those that are the pioneers will make the trillions of dollars in nations that invest. That is just one asteroid. And not the very large ones at that. There are thousands of asteroids out there. To give us some kind of substantial value of an asteroid, BBC gives us that. To the intellectual think tanks of those that are scientists and renowned in their specifics or their spears of the outer space. How much is Eras worth? This is just a simple calculation. Quote, today's trading price of gold is about $1,250 per ounce. Per ounce. Or about 50 million or 100 million per tonnage. It means that the value of gold in the asteroids, Eras, just one, is around one trillion. That is just gold. Platinum is even more expensive at $1,350 per ounce. And he quotes, work it out yourself. You figure it. What a magnificent venture. A hedge fund for our children, for our nation, our people. Since it contains lots of rare elements and metals that are in of use in the semiconductor industry, for example, at today's price, Eras is worth more than two trillion dollars. We can't phantom two trillion. I can't phantom two hundred thousand. Two million. This is two trillion. That's just the speculation. It could be two, three times more than that. And those with the initial investment, they're going to make money. We can't see that. Look at the technology boom. Look at Silicon Valley. Look at the boom of the internet, Zuckers and all of them, multi-billionaires, are they not? Firstly, we must understand such a dramatic influx of metals to the earth could crash the global market for such commodities. We must understand that. He says this $20 trillion rock that's what the value of it is. This 20 trillion. Do you understand the wealth of the earth today, what it is, and what we will call in numeric terms of dollars or euros? It's probably less than 70 trillion dollars. This nation, its wealth would be around 12 to 14 trillion. That's what everything. Land and timber and gold and ores and oil, and people and buildings and substance. It's only around that much. And yet here is one rock. Yeah, I made that rock. It's worth 20 trillion, nearly a third of the value of Earth's resources. And the pioneers of that will reap benefits from generation to generation. You can't lose with this. To make comparison, 
it says the 20 trillion rock could turn a startup company into Earth's richest country. Here is one, an asteroid by the name of a moon, 3554. BBC meets a moon. Doesn't look like much, right? I deleted the picture. Little more than a mile wide, it is one of the smallest M-class metal-bearing asteroid yet discovered. Unless it is ever decided to smash into us a theoretical possibility, but extremely unlikely over the next few centuries, it will continue to orbit the sun unknown and unmolested of the great riches. That is unless planetary resources has a, its way, planetary resources uh, is the asteroid mining company launched Tuesday in Bellevue, Washington, with backing from Microsoft uh, and Google's billionaires, uh, along with equally a prominent uh, James Cameron and Ross Perot Jr. Its objective is completely dismembered this poor little rock like a moon. And that's because a moon is a gold mine. Well, not gold so much, but it does contain a cool. Can you imagine a tenth of this? Eight billion dollars? Or a tenth of that eight million. Eight million. But it contains a cool eight trillion worth of platinum. Eight trillion. That's nearly half the wealth of this nation. An essential precious metal used in everything from jewelry to fuel cells, to computers, and one that currently trading at the same rate as gold, $1,500 an ounce. On Earth only, and a few hundred tonnage of this stuff are produced every year. Not like a thousand tons, but a few hundred. 300 tons of it. And a moon has enough to make us all rich and wealthy beyond our wildest expectation. The $8 trillion figure is an estimate based on observation by one of the most renowned, John S. Lewis. He is a professor of planetary science author of Mining the Sky, untold riches from the asteroids, comets, and planets, and now he is a consultant to planetary resources. He also is the one that found 3554 a moon to contain another 8 trillion. Just in that one planetary orbiting Little Rock, there is more wealth than the whole of America. There's another eight trillion in iron, nickel, and then this is insulting as the way they quote it because it's insulting to what can be extracted at a mere, a smidgen of a mere six trillion for cobalt. Ouch. Six trillion, just a mere nations. There are few nations where tricks six trillion dollars is their GNP. The whole country doesn't have that kind of a wealth. Just a mere six trillion in cobalt. So the total payout from one of these assuming asteroids 
I had to do a double take on this. It is $20 trillion. One eye short of one mile long. There is more wealth than a third of the wealth in the world. Don't you understand those that invest in this hedge? Can you understand what great dividends it's going to pay? Don't shut me out. That's what got Planetary Resources co-founder Peter Domitus so excited. There are $20 trillion checks up there waiting to be cashed in. It's there. The money is there. You just need investors to invest in this fund. It would be foolish not to invest in it. He is enthused at the space development as he conferred with those at this conference. I want to give you the scope of this, and I want to begin teaching from here. To show you the scope of the wealth of one asteroid, some, an asteroid like Eros or 3454, a moon, to show you or to give it some kind of identity to equate with, beating Apple is easy. To become the wealthiest company in the world, Planetary resource need to only capture one rock. Just one. Less than that, in fact. Half of a rock. And you have invested in this concept in the initial start up. Apple computers, currently the world's most valuable company, has a market cap of a half trillion, five hundred billion dollars. That's a lot of money. You could buy islands with that. You can buy your own homeland. You can excavate all the people you want out of this nation. What a hedge fund. Astronomical beyond comprehension. It's a reality. Billionaires do not invest in those things that are not profitable unto them. That's why they're billionaires. To match that in resources, let alone market cap, planet resources need only to mine one fourteenth, just a fraction of this asteroid. Still, for all this wealth, platinum and gold may not be the most important thing, the asteroid that one can mine. The water, the Mayan, or some ice-bound asteroids could count for more in the long run. Just the continuous plant water with our acra fresh polluted with chemicals and Diseases flourish in the midst of the aqua flow. Not only does it make the existence of life in space that much easier, but it also can be broken down into the perfect rocket fuel, hydrogen, oxygen. The more planetary resources start a gold rush, 
The more important warden space become. No wonder the company is already talking about building a chain of orbitals at the space-bound refueling stations. Eyes from the asteroids and comets could be the next most prolific oil industry. You have taken the initiative to buy into such a fund of such magnitude. Yah created them, did he not? Does it all belong to Yah? Yeah. We must invest in the greatest of hedge funds. You must take everything you got, sell everything you got. I want to begin in Torah. Here in the book of Yeremiah to give you an idea as to what shall begin to transpire. We must have a hedge. There must be a treasure for the house of Yisrael. Gold and silver and the precious commodities of Yah. He made the gold in the earth. It's his. It's not the wicked's. This is what the Nobi says here in Yeremiah, Jeremiah. One verse, chapter 10 and verse 10. He declares emphatically that Almighty Yahweh, uh, He is the only true mighty one. Yeremiah 10, 10. He is the only true Abba. He is the living. He is the one of high. He is the living Abba. He is the everlasting Olam Viyaz Melak. He is everlasting King Yisrael. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. It shall go into convulsion. It shall tremble. It shall reel to and fro as a drunk man. As he walks without direction or insight as to the vision that is ahead. He says, and the nations, and the nations shall not be able to abide in the Ibra, the indignation, the wrath of Almighty Yahweh. And so when the Ibra of Yah is poured out, who can stand in the day of Yah? We as a nation of people, we need to collab collaborate and be on one of the most expensive renowned funds to fund the house of Yisrael that is greater than one could ever imagine. We hear the prophets speak as I just read. These are men that are renowned. The names are more synonymous uh, with wealth and greatness uh, than even the Creator's name. It is more synonymous, uh, Bill Gates, uh, more people know him uh, than even their gods. So when men of this great excellence uh, tells you that this is the way to go, uh, I think we as a nation, we need to take heed, would not you say? Well, let us see what Yah says. I will take heed to the Torah. I will show you the greatest of hedge funds. How that we as a nation, that we can store up the Yatsa, the treasures of Yah. Greater than the gold and the silver. Greater than the wealth of Iras. Let's see what Yah says. Hallelujah. I want to read from the different dimensions of the Torah. I want to begin here. In Yeskel, Ezekiel, 
chapter 13 verse 4. Ayah speaks of a tremendous judgment. That's why I read what I did in Yeremiah chapter 10 verse 10. That's why I read that. If you read this whole chapter in verse 9, you will see that silver spreads in verse 9 of chapter 10, Yeremiah. I simply wanted to induce or introduce one verse. And that was verse 10. It says, uh, and the nation shall not be able to abide in the indignation or the Ebra, the great wrath, his terror that he shall reign. Even the earth shall rock to and fro. This is his judgment. This is the judgment of Yah that is defiant by man. What is the hedge for of Yisraya? We must have a treasure. We must have a hedge for. We must do it, Yisraya. We must. Does Torah speak about a hedge for? Sure it does. And the word found in the Hebrew is koach, having strength and power, having the resources, the wherewithal. In the day of the Ebra of Almighty Yahweh, we must have that. We must develop the hedge funds for Yisrael. Hallelujah. It says here in the book of Yeskel, Ezekiah, hallelujah. It says here in Yeskel chapter 13, verse 4. Yah speaks of the prophets that are full of Shekhar. And we see this with Mr. Diamondus, Mr. Cameroon. These are prophets of the world. And these are the ones that those that say that they are Yisraya, they're easily subdued by their mannerism and their wealth because of their gay clothing. Because of their attire. Yah says to Yisrael. Chapter 13 verse 4. Oh. Yisrael. He cries. With a great kara. With his voice. Emanating from his nabi. He says your. Navi im. Your nabi. Your prophet. He says they are just like Shuel. They are just like a fox. He said, these are the ones uh, like foxes in the deserts uh, that they burrow uh, and they burrow themselves uh, in their uh, intelligence uh, or they perceive as a, an intelligence. Uh, it is superficial. It is a hybrid. There is only one intelligence. And that's the knowledge of Torah. Yeah. The mind of Yah that created everything. There is no other mind that could create the asteroids or the meteorites, but Yah. Yeah. Yet the arrogance of man says, uh, there's enough wealth. We defy Yah. You invest. The wealthy are doing it. You're poor. You don't have a damn thing. Take your pennies and your dimes. Collaborate together and invest. And there should be a wealth. It is beyond your expectation. Your prophets are foxes. They're deceivers. And they're liars. Yah says you. You have not gone. Into the ferrets. Into the gap. You have allowed the breach to flow. The breach has been broken. The breach of Yah's Torah has been broken from our hearts. And we rely upon the resources of a wicked world. Or the prophets of the world. Invest in gold. Invest in silver. Invest in the precious market. Lay up your hedge fund to hedge in the day of Yah's wrath. The day of his Abra with his anger is beyond even quantifying or qualifying it. It's beyond the concept of the mind of man. It's beyond expressive superlatives and terminology in the, in the annals of, uh, of linguists. Only he can express it. Only he can make it known. You have not gone up into the gaps, into the breaches. He says, neither have these false prophets uh, 
made up the gather, the hedge, the funds, the strength, the koach, the resolve. They have not made up the hedge. Isn't that what it is identified in America, that which uh, will give you comfort in your longevity of life? Uh, you invest in hedge funds. Uh, he said, these prophets are false. Mr. Gates is false. Uh, and those out of the luminaries, they're false. Uh, they have not closed uh, the breach of the gap. We have breached your gaps, yeah. We have pursued that which is not of you We have tried to qualify our devious activities uh, and our love for riches uh, and murder. So invest. Hedge about yourself. Invest in the funds that shall produce death. There's no life in Israel. Yah says the Nobi, the prophets, have not got there. Have not fenced in the minds the, 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 the love of truth among Israel. And yet, even the most renowned people in this nation and the world are investing in planetary resources. Because of the returns are exponential. It is beyond the ability, one of my nature that is only poor and dull, to comprehend the wealth. And the extension of wealth, what it does, what it creates, how it corrupts, how it kills, and how it destroys. They have not placed the hedge where forbid Israel. Where's the hedge fund? Where's our strength? What is our resolve in the day of Yah's Ebra? In the day of Yah's great indignation, whereby he shall shunneth, destroy, without pity, any concern at all. He said they have neither made up the hedge for Beit Yisraya to stand. We need the hedge from Yisraya to do what to stand in the day, in the battle, to stand in the battle in the day of Almighty Yahweh. Our minds have not been hedged about with truth. We invest in every damn thing there is. We give it our resources to everything that produced death in us. We give it our energy and our thoughts. We're not hedging our minds about with the Torah of Yah. We're full of lust, every kind of deceitful lust for wicked, damnable thing there is. We don't draw nigh unto him. We draw nigh unto every kind of vow, repulsive activity that one can imagine. He said the prophets have not hedged about the house of Israel. We must be hedged. For the battle is on the horizon. We must have the hedge fund. We must have the koach. We must have the gada. Not the resources of Iras or Amun. We need something greater than that. We need to understand the hedge fund of Yah. We need to understand the value and the riches of that hedge fund. We need to know what that hedge fund consists of and the great value of that Israel. Listen to this out of the mouth of Shirak. It says this, Shirak 40, 25. He uses the words goal. He says to us, Yisrael, hallelujah. He says, gold, do you hear that? Gold and silver makes the foot stand sure. There's an arrogance. You hear the words of those of planetary resource? It makes the foot stand sure. It gives a man strength. It gives him koak. It gives him assurance of his power, his might. It says gold and silver makes the foot stand sure. But he says to us, Yisraya, Sharach 40 verse 25. He says, but, but excellent, but renowned, the counsel, the muzah, the instructions, the correction, the rebuke, the repudiation. He says, but good counsel is esteemed greater than both of them. Yeah. It's nothing greater than the counsel of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. 
You ought to hedge your mind about uh, for the battle of the day of Yah. And every kind of shadim, every kind of unclean thing will come against the very concept of the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach. And so the illuminaries of the earth say that uh, invest into planetary resources because the wealth is beyond your comprehension to understand there is nothing greater to hedge in the day of the assault of hell than the counsel of Almighty Yahweh, than the correction of his counsel, his muza to be disciplined, to have one's mind refurbished daily by the judgment or, or him judging us for our opposition against him. Nothing greater than that. Sure gold makes the foot. And silver cause one to stand with a robust arrogance. There's nothing like the hedge of Yah's counsel. It hedges your mind, Israel. It hedges your health. It hedges the wealth, the esha, the shalom, the gladness, the riches of Yah's assurance. And you stand in the midst of the battle and you still stand still when everything else seems to be crumbling all around you. We need the hedge fund. Yeah. We began with the counsel of Almighty Yah that He corrects us. He instructs us in our immature little ways that are so wicked and so corrupt. We can amass all the gold. We can take all of our funds and invest in planetary resources. That young ark like him, him and his Ishaw and their children will have within 10 years a wealth that uh, will begin to trickulate in that will be substantial. Uh, but it does not set one's heart aright with Yah or yeah. the hedge of Yah for the battle that is ahead. Yeah. For there shall be chaos and greed and lust and wickedness that come forth out of that spirit because they're defying Yah. You think the goal is going to resolve the issues? You think the silver is going to resolve it? When you got these devious devils of hell telling people to buy gold and silver? To invest in food that they can stock up for years? They're telling people to do that, Yisrael. They're telling them to buy gold and silver. The market is growing. You can go out here and take a damn pebble uh, and you can infuse that in the psyche of man's mind. He will think that it is valuable. Uh. It is not that gold is rare. you just hit it from the wickedness of man. Yeah. Restore the beauty of his kingdom every building uh, in, uh, in Jerusalem shall be gold uh, and silver and the precious ores of Yah. Do not allow this wicked man. They will not harvest one stone out of the heavens of Yah. They will not be able to lay hold on to Yah's riches that is stored for the hedge fund of Yisrael. It is in reserve for the hedge fund of Yisrael. It is the kingdom riches uh, and the hedge fund uh, of bad Yisrael. Yeah. You see, their goal is kinky. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Yah says by the mouth of the prophet Yeskel, listen, turn. Yeskel chapter 7 verse 17. I read from Yeremiah 10, 10 of the day of Yah, the great battle that shall enrage among upon in and out the nations of the earth. What I read. I qualify that and quantify that in Yeskel 13. When the Nobi says that the prophets, uh, they have not closed the breach. They have not hedged. They have not got the air. They have not fenced in. They have not caused uh, the mind of Yisrael to be surrounded uh, with the comforting and the comfort of the Torah. There is no power of the Ruach emanating from them. Uh, and there's a breach. The water, when there's a breach, uh, the walls are torn down. 
You cannot build the walls of Yah with untempered mortar. You cannot insert a corruption of lies and wickedness, self indulgence and corruption, and think that our mortar or the substance of our lives will be strong. Mud is not going to do it. Gold is not going to do it. The prophet says, it will be yes, scale, Ezekiah, chapter 7, verse 17. He talks about the, delash, the desolation of the land and the distrust that shall come upon the multitude. And there shall be only a small remnant that shall escape. Listen to the words of the Nobi here in Ezekiah, chapter 7, verse 17. He says, call all, yeah, all hands. He calls and instructs us that all of the hands shall be rafa, they shall be feeble. The heart shall be disheartened, the hands shall be weak. He said, and all the knees shall be lack. There shall be no strength to stand, stand in what? In the Torah. To stand in Yah's truth. To be heads about with the head fond of Almighty Yah. That it is impenetrable. It cannot be impregnated. That nothing rising up against it shall be able to overthrow. Because the fortification of that comes by Almighty Yahweh. We are the testimony of his strength. That's our fund. That's our assurance, Yoshua HaMashiach. We have the power of that testimony. Eros. Yeah, I said I put it right by the sun, the S U N. Your robotic technology will not be able to even stand against the solar flares, and my indignation shall rise upon you, arrogant dogs out of hell. You're not contented. It's more than enough for every man and every woman in the earth. It is the rich bastards like the billionaires. They're in Bellevue, Washington. It is like the rich greedy bastards like the Walmarts. It is these bastards. It is these mamsies, their birth. It's not the natural order of the spiritual birth uh, that comes forth, uh, came out of Israel. Yeah. They have been birthed out of convoluted concept of hell. Uh, and they were impregnated with the forces of hell from birth. There's one thing that gave me great assurance above all things, above everything. I know that Yah made it that way. He is in control. He created life. He created death. He kills and he makes alive. You don't have to fear death because it is not the damn devil that kills. Y'all kills. He is the one that does that. He is in control of everything. The enemy is just the enemy of the truth. He is a workman of Almighty Yahweh. He works in the vineyard of Yah. Yah you ordains his power. Almighty Yahweh, we ordain the powers of darkness. I'm glad of that. So that's why I can walk in the midst of the darkness with the power of the testament of Yahshua, the light of Yah. Hallelujah. Can I proceed? He said, they shall, in verse 18, they shall also gird themselves with sack. He says, uh, in the palasuth, or the terror of the great horror, the horrifying trembling shall cover them, the nations of the earth. And shame shall be upon their faces. And he says that the kuha, the baldness upon their head. He says, there shall be such devastation. There shall be no hedge. That's what a hedge farm is for, to fence one in, to cover one. Isn't that the purpose of a hedge fund? It is to shut out. It is to make sure that which is in, uh, it is secured. 
That's what a hedge fund is. Your monies are secured. Uh, they rest in investments uh, uh, that, that they may be conservative, uh, but they're sure investments. Uh, the returns are not as great as one uh, of planetary resources, uh, but there's a trickulation of funds all the time. Uh, that is the hedge of God. There's a trickulation of truth all the time. When you're weak, it makes you strong. When you're feeble, it builds you up. When you're distraught, it brings encouragement. Uh, when you don't know which way to turn, it tells you to turn into the way of the truth. Uh, that's what it is, Yisraya. That is the hedge of Yah. It brings us back to the way. Haderach, the way of Yah. When you fall, it picks you up and it washes you and set your feet aright. Uh, in the course of his everlasting truth. Your mind betray you and, uh, and oppose you. Uh, it is the mind of Yoshua that rises up. They cannot be impenetrated by your mind, your will, your thoughts. Uh, it is the strength of Yah. It is the fun of Yah. We need the resources of Yah. We need the hedge fund, Yisrael Yah. We got to invest in planetary resources. Uh, it's not going to do us any tough at all. And the day of Yah's great indignation in his Ebra, in his uh, great uh, Hamas, uh, in his terror that he shall, uh, he shall rent upon the nations of the earth. Uh, for what? For how they have treated Israel. Yeah. You feel worthless and you feel as though you're not even worth anything. You feel so the sense of disconnected. There's only one thing we need to connect to, that's truth. Yeah. Hell, if I fail you tomorrow and go the way of hell, you still connect to truth. Hallelujah. If I turn my back like an abysmal demon out of hell, you connect to truth. Hallelujah. He says in verse 19, $20 trillion worth of gold, silver, platinum. The Nobby says... They shall shalach. They shall herald with great energy. They shall cast. They shall shalach. Isn't this what everyone seeks? In their hedge funds. He said they shall cast their kesef. Let not these liars tell you that what Many call fiat currency. When Yah used the word money, he uses the word kesef. He uses the word khatta, gold. It is of the same nature of fiat currency. Any precious metal, brass, and all of that, isn't that what planetary resources are looking for? Are they not looking for cobalt? Are they not looking for magnesium uh, uh, and aluminum? Are they not looking for that, Yisrael? For platinum, for gold, for silver? Yah says they got a cast their silver in the street uh, and their zahab, their gold, their precious metal is going to be removed. What does that mean? It's going to be nida. That's what a woman does from her body. She extracts her. It's got to be removed. And Yah uses the word here, remove. It is nida. For it is unclean. Their goal is unclean. For planetary resources or research or, or this, uh, 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 this rendezvous with an asteroid, he's going to kill them all. He's going to kill them all. Yah says your gold is not going to be worth a damn. You buy the damn silly gold. You better invest in the funds of Yah. You better put your funds in the storehouse of Almighty Yahweh. You have bought, you have uh, gold and searching uh, for those things that are so damn empty. That's why you're empty. We are empty headed people. There's a breach in our minds. Uh, we defy Yah. Uh, we denounce Him. Uh, we are war truth. Uh, that's why we have disdain uh, for the house of Yisrael. He said, you false damn prophets. You have not heard about the house of Yisrael. What is the bed, Yisra'ya? Is this this little 
cinder block building. We are all members of the bed of the body, members in particular. We must be hedged about, and the messenger of Yah must hedge our mind about with truth. Must be hedged about. He says, your Zahab, your goal, shall be as nida, it shall be as idolatry. That's what these men, that's why you have these goal pushers and thumpers. This is idolatry, Yisra'ya. It is nida. Any time the world tells you what you must do to prepare, you know it's wrong. I will show us what to do to prepare for this day. I will show us as a nation, you that are alive and remain, you shall be here. There are some of us that are getting old, I hope to be here. I'm living to be here. And we must have the funds, the heads about us, uh, and the funds we must have, uh, the riches, we must have the treasures uh, of all money Yahweh for this day. We must buy truth, and you don't sell it. And so all of these gold pushers, uh, and you find that 99.9% of them are wicked men. And the small fraction of the 0.1%, they are just dumb, jackass, uh, ignorant, damn fools uh, that is thumping a wicked Jesus uh, and a survival in this damn wicked country. Damn them all. Uh, they are bastards. We buy truth. That's what hair just about. In the day of the onslaught of hell, when our minds cannot function in the realm of reality, truth always does. When we can't differentiate between what is right to do and wrong to do, truth always. Because one of the most vital substance of truth is this, may I inform you. It is one thing. It is Mishpatim, the judgment of Yah for his Torah is truth. And it judges us constantly. That our minds are hedged against the day of Yah. We must keep our thoughts hedged. Silver is not going to do a damn thing. All the money in the world, you will not be happy. You can spend all damn day and it will not satisfy you. Hell and the grave, they are never full, neither never low. Indeed, can the heart of man be satisfied? If you own one of the asteroids and had uh, 60 trillion dollars, you will not be happy. You will not be satisfied. If you had a million square foot house, you wouldn't be happy. I will my my friend, my real, I will. You still will be happy. It will not hedge against your miseries. It will not hedge you against death and corruption. There is only one thing, the counsel, the muza of Yah that hedges us. And it gives us riches of the wisdom of Yah when he corrects us. That's why a damn fool doesn't want to be corrected. Only those that are grown in the wisdom of Yah. All of those that have the koach of Yah, they love correction. They want the counsel of Yah. They shall herald. They shall shalak their gold and their silver into the street. It says this, yes, scale 719, their silver nor their gold shall be able to nasar, to deliver, to rescue them, to bring them out. Nothing is going to deliver you. The silver, their gold. Your silver and your gold will not deliver you. Don't you understand the repugnance of these liars telling you to buy silver and gold? What are you going to buy with? If you believe their story of the account of what shall be nuclear activity, waste, dispense, 
throughout the atmosphere the rain of death, the boils and the sores of death penetrating the bodies, sickness and the stench of death. And yet they were in the hedge of Ya as Arzakhi reminds us often. They were in Gosha. These things did not come nigh unto them. And yeah. even Hallelujah. as Yasha says, those that Yah killed, he caused Yisra to bury that the Egyptians would not even know that he had poured out his Ebra upon them. That's why we bear the sins we cover the sins of Israel. You don't broadcast that to the world. Your gold and your silver will not deliver you. If you had 3554 Amun, the rock, the asteroid, you would not be happy with all of that wealth. We need a hedge, Yisrael. Yeah, we need the hedge funds. We need the koak. We need the strength and the might of Almighty Yah. We need the protection. We need to be shut in. And that's what a hedge does. We need to be shut in. Not only does the hedge, it protects us, but it also restrains us. You can go outside of the hedge. And we cannot go outside of the hedge of Yah's Torah, Yisrael. And we're trying to find that in gold and silver and riches and diamonds. Uh, and these things that man pronounced as precious. Uh, everything that Yah made is precious. One grain of sand is precious. Uh, there's nothing more precious to Yah than the death of one of his kiddosh, uh, man. You tell me that a piece of, of a damn chunk of gold is greater than that. Uh, there's nothing more precious than the life of Yisra'ya that you cohabitate with, you love, uh, you share with, you care for, and you look after. Hallelujah. We're so damn dumb, we're wicked. Yeah. You're not getting mine. Yeah. And I don't give a damn if you don't love me. Yeah. Makes me no difference. I don't care how you feel about me. The gold shall not be able to Nassau to deliver them in the day of Yah's Ebra, this pouring out of his anger, uncontrollable, without any kind of passion, it is excessive. In the day of Yah's wrath, he says, they shall not be, they shall not. Do you hear this? He uses the word Shabbat. They shall not be satisfied. There shall not be a satiation. They shall not be free. They shall not satisfy their nephesh. Neither shall their bowels, their bellies, their mea, the place of appetite that drives them. Neither shall their bowels be satisfied. Why? Because your gold and your silver, it is a stumbling block. It is a mikshol. It is the obstacle. It is the thing that entice you. When you got money, it entice you to do every kind of wicked thing. I'm glad that I'm broke. Hallelujah. Having food and raiment therewith, just that alone be, be contented. Hallelujah. Let that hedge you in the day of great trials. I, I want to move a little bit here. Come on. Hallelujah. He says, because that has become a mikshol, a stumbling block of their twisted ovon, their ovin, their twisted mindset. If I had this, I'm going to do that. If I had this, I'm going to buy that. And you become, uh, you become an open, a short tack. Your mind becomes open to everything. You buy this, you get that. No. We must invest. The head's fun of you. We must uh, buy the wisdom of you. We must buy truth. Buy understanding and don't sell it. Uh, don't denounce it because uh, it corrects you. Uh, because it speaks to your ills and your corruption, uh, your wickedness. Uh, you must buy the counsel of Yah. Yeah. Yeah. I want to pause a moment here. I'm quite sure we've all heard about the meteorite that struck Russia. The article in the Charlotte Observer, I want to read this one. Meteorite explosion, Russian's region began recovery in frigid weather. 
in the state of Shelyabinsky, Russia, a small army of workers set to work Saturday to replace the estimated 200,000 square meters, about 50 acres, of windows shattered by the shock wave from a meteoroid that exploded over Russia, Shelyabinsky region. The astonishing Friday morning event blew out windows in more than 4,000 buildings in the region, mostly in the capital city of the same name and injured some 1,200 people, largely with cuts and flying glasses. Fifteen of the injuries remain hospitalized on Saturday, one of them in a coma, the region health ministry said, according to the Interfax News Agency. Regional Governor Michel Jurovic on Saturday said damage from the high altitude explosion estimated to have had the impact or the force of 20 atomic bombs. It estimate at 1 billion rubles. He promised to have all the broken windows replaced within one week. But that is a long wait in a frigid region. The midday temperatures, the midday temperature of Shelyabinsky was minus 12 Celsius, 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And for many, the immediate task was to put plastic sheeting and boards on the shattered residential windows. More than 2,400 people, including volunteers, have mobilized in the region to cover windows, gather warm clothing and food, and make relief efforts. The region governor said, crew from glass companies, adjacent regions, they are being flown in. In the town of Shibakul, 80 kilometers, 50 miles from Shelyabinsky city, drivers explore the bottom of the ice-crusted lake looking for meteoroids, fragments, believed to have fallen there, leaving a six meter wide, about 20 feet hole, Emergency Ministry spokeswoman Irena Rosias told Russian news agency uh, the search hadn't found anything. Police kept a small crowd of curious onlookers from venturing onto the ice lake where a tent was set up for the divers. Many of them are still trying to process the memories of the strange day they live through. He's going to come in the hour and the time we think not. He shall light the heaven. This was just a little rock that did this. He is the rock. He is the Eben, the rock of our Yeshua. Valery Fumashov said, he had been out on a run. Man running in 10 degrees, that's insane. Mr. Formatroff, when the meteorite struck across, listen, the sky shortly after sunrise, I glanced up and saw a glowing dot in the west. It became bigger and bigger like a soccer ball until it became so brilliantly white and I turned away because he could not look at it. 
When the Oshua come, every eye shall behold him. They got to see him. In the local church, clergyman, Saxton, Sergei, sought to derive a larger lesson. Quote, perhaps God was given a kind of sign so that people don't simply think about their own trifles on the earth. But rather, look to the heavens once in a while. There shall be no sign given to this wicked generation. But the sign of the coming of the Son of Man. There shall be no sign. The wicked shall do wickedly, and they shall not be known, they shall not understand. But the true degree of those that are on the heads of Yah the righteous understands both Yam, day, time, hour, second. He understands both time, the Yam of Yah, and the Mishpat, Tim of the Mishpat. He understands both time and judgment. We are so concerned with the truthful things of life. We hedge our minds with things that uh, cannot stand in the day of wrath or on the day of battle. That's why we fall. We falter. We fall prey to corruption and sin. Their goal shall not deliver them. They're going to shalach. They're going to cast it into the streets. The diamond rings, your riches, uh, your gold watches, uh, your Rolexes, uh, and your Lamborghinis, uh, and your Rolls Royces will not deliver you. Uh, there shall be no satisfaction in them. Uh, so shall we buy the gold? We as a nation, shall we all uh, invest uh, in planetary resources uh, to hell with planetary resources? Uh, I invest uh, in the Torah of God. I will trust them with a dime, uh, just like I would 10,000 dimes. Yeah. Damn this wicked world. Don't tell me if you had it, you would give. Give yeah. what you got. You don't have a damn thing you can love, Yisrael, love one another. To be kind and affectionate. You don't have to have one damn dime. You can learn how to love and to be kind and to be generous. And to have a heart of caring. Have confidence and trust. We don't have a damn thing. We trust silver. We trust gold. And we get happy. We hear money. I will, man. It makes us rejoice. Yeah. Yet esteem it our ark to hedge him. In the day of battle to hedge you, we don't give a damn. Yeah. Esteem the wicked. We lift up the most vilest of the wicked. What treasures do we possess? What are treasures? You need treasures to hedge. You must have treasures. What well, does the Torah talk about a hedge fund? Sure it does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said they shall cast their gold and their silver into the street. For it shall not deliver them. There was one by the name of Yoshua Hamashiach. He was rejected. He was betrayed for some pitling silver. He said they shall shalach. They shall cast it. Everything in the Torah whether it is actual, metaphorically, speech, revelation, prophetic, that shall be even in the hour and the time of the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. We are people that shall be judged. And what Yah did even in the body of that flesh of Yahshua, He judged the world. He condemned the condemned and he made free those that were in Torah who had been hedged by his death. It says this, I want to read this. I said I want to read from, from the construct of Torah, from a little here, there, and from everywhere. It says in the book of Metithia, Matthew, When Yahshua delivered unto Pilate, 
You see, why will they cast their gold into the street? Because he told us uh, they're going to be faint-hearted. They're going to be despaired. Uh, it says here in Matithia 27, 5, and Yahura, he cast down the 30 pieces of silver. In the bed, in the house. And he departed. And he went. And he hanged himself. He departed. Just like the Walton son, the wicked one with all those 16, 20 billion dollars. He goes and put a pistol to his head. And he kills himself. And that's what you will do. We need the hedge, Yisrael. We need to be fenced about. Gold and silver is not going to deliver us. You can buy all the gold you want. I'm telling you, there's not going to be a damn thing you're going to be able to buy. You can get all the silver you want to. There shall be no bread. There shall be nothing that one. The earth is going to be contaminated. Uh, did you not hear whereby uh, Mr. Sh uh, in the article I read, he said it was as though uh, it was 20 atomic bombs uh, going off. Uh, and this was the explosion in the heavens. Uh, and this was just the fragments uh, that left from one little rock uh, that made a hole uh, this big. Uh, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. From there to there and that wide. Twenty by twenty. That's not big, Israel. It will cause devastation. We don't know the hand of you. You can hedge against that hand with some damn gold or silver. You cannot allow the breach in your mind, in your heart, that you defy what your commands. Hallelujah. You seek out alternatives, alternatives that, that destroy you. You cannot. Hallelujah. We must have the hedge funds of Yah. We must have the treasures of Yah. Hallelujah. And all that he thought would bring satisfaction. We betray Yahshua HaMashiach for a sensual emotion uh, some kind of gratification for a moment. Uh, it is temporal. It doesn't last long. And then we cast that aside looking for some other type uh, of revival to hedge us, uh, to secure us. That's what the hedge fund uh, of Yah is. It is to secure you. It is to hedge you about. Uh, just like Arad brought out uh, that he did with Eob, he hedged. Even the devil knew that. Uh, you have hedged him with your funds. Uh, he have your funds, your strength, uh, your perseverance. Uh, and as he said to us, so can't we it. Uh, in all of that... Uh, he didn't charge you foolishly. Yeah. Why am I going through this? What is the reason? I don't have this. I don't have that. Damn foolishness. Yeah. You know, it's one thing I tell you all the time. I know you may not believe but him kill me. I mean that. I don't want to do anything that bring a Plague to the body of Israel. Kill me. Don't let me live, Yah. I mean it. Let me be a liar and a wicked damn child of hell. I want him to be truthful. I tell him all the time, kill me. Even when the enemy tries to cause things to fail, I say, Yah, kill me. Don't even let me think that. You know I mean it. And he knows it. I'm not afraid to say that. I want you to, according to this book, not my own self-righteousness. It is near us like a filthy rag. Not my kindness. My kindness is not worth a damn. Not my love. My love is superficial. It is so damn false, so unreal. I want Yah, for Yah is a hava. He is love. Your damn love is, is, is moody, is false, it stinks like hell. You're corrupt, you're insincere, you're phony as a damn jackass. I don't take one word back. But not real. Hedge me about, yeah. Hedge me. 
I don't want the planetary resources. They're going to cast their gold and their silver. It is all kesef. I don't care if you got 10,000 tonnages of gold or silver. It is all kesef. Yatta. It is a metal that is utilized for exchange. Don't invest your money in gold and silver. Invest your money into the kingdom truth, Yisrael. Don't worry about houses and land. Have food and raiment. Well, I need my babies a heritage. The only heritage you can give your sons and your daughter is truth. They came with nothing into this earth. They're going to die with not one damn thing. Now look in the surrounding area how these poor people of the diaspora, they left houses and land for their children, and it is not even in what they call the family this day. You leave them truth. And if you leave them truth, they will understand what is most important uh, and the value of truth. Uh, and they will not seek after those things uh, because Yah knows what we are in need of. Hallelujah. He clothed the sparrow and there are many. Will he not take care of the needs of Yisrael? Yeah. Sure he does all the time. I'm not trying to hedge with gold or, or silver. I'm not trying to hedge uh, with storable food. Uh, he shall feed us in the midst uh, of all of the calamities. Uh, and he shall feed us the lunch and the bread of life. Uh, he shall feed us the testimony and the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. If we live, it's all right. If we die, it's still all right. Well, because for me to live is Yoshua HaMashiach, and for me to die is the gain of your heads. My mind about with that truth. Yeah. Natash can't touch that. Nahash, Nahash cannot touch that. Yeah. Nothing can touch that, Yisraya. We live in the power of this testimony. We hedge our mind with this. We hedge our heart. Uh, we hedge our will with this. Uh, it is the funds. It is the koach. It is the strength uh, of our ability to persevere and to press forward. Uh, hell, all the gold in the world is not going to make the people of the diaspora rich. Uh, we got to spirit and get drunk uh, and do dope just like every damn white man, every damn Jew man, and every damn Arabic. Yeah. Yeah. We satisfy them. Why would one want another billion when they got 50 billion? Why would you need another car when you have 40 cars? The Sultan of Brunei has 700 cars. What can he do? He's stupid. And they're all in one garage, too. And he's not satisfied. And these are not Chrysler's and Chevy's. These are Bentley's and the Rolls Royce's and Mercedes Benz and Jags. The Maybach. For his guests, for his family. He housed all of his parliamentary in his house. All those that serve in his government lives with him. This is a damn heathen. All that in his government eats lives with him. They eat with him. He got a dining hall that seats 1,000 people. And he's a damn heathen. He got cafeterias for their children to rent it out all day to eat. Yisrael doesn't give a damn. They don't give a damn about each other with their selfish, wicked ways. Hedge me about with truth, y'all. We are the Yehudas. We sell out Yah for what? For nothing. Then we cast it down because of our emotion. Uh, and because our mind has not been hazed about, it rises up again. And we find ourselves performing the same thing over and over. And the reason why? Because you're buying lies and we're not buying truth. Uh, Mr. Planetary uh, uh, Repository, you're not going to gain one damn foothold in the kingdom uh, or in the spaces of Almighty Yah. He has resided us to the earth. Uh, he has not allowed you to go to the depth of the earth. There's enough oil. Uh, in the depth of the earth, there's enough uh, cobalt and everything uh, that the earth can not contain it. But this damn wickedness of the riches and the greed of this damn wicked nation of the Europeans is not going to allow them to touch it. It has been un tainted by the hands of man because any time we touch anything we taint it. We make it even more corrupt than us. It's untainted by the hands of man. 
is there. Is there, Yisrael. There's enough water to, to supply the whole earth. You think that man would be appreciative if he could harness uh, Eros? He's a greedy bastard. We're greedy. We're grammatizers. We can't have enough. We don't want truth, but we can't have enough of lies and folly and frivolity. And so we sell Yahshua out for something that is of a lie, that is false, uh, that has no power. And we hedge our mind with lies. We retain lies. We hold fast the falsehood and every kind of damn corruption that we remember. And Yah tells us to remember. It's Shabbat. Remember truth. The Shabbat is the time whereby we come. We know we'll refresh. We have no ought. We have no ill. We have no misgivings in our hearts against His right. We know we're right. And so we can come before the altar of Yah and offer the pure offering. And in that He hedges us. He keeps us hedged about. We don't charge your foolish say, you're not going to do a damn thing to me. You can say what you want to, you're not going to do a damn thing. Yo, you say you don't talk to y'all that way, but that's the way we do. We hold an oath in our bosom. We hedge our minds with thought against this nation, his elect people. You don't look worth a damn. No more than I look worth a damn. But they are the people of y'all. You don't have a damn thing. You have no money, no wealth. But they're Yah's people. We are the misfits. We don't look worth a damn, but Yah say it's still mine. I elected. Show doesn't look like he's worth, worth much. He said, I got hedge. I got value in him. He doesn't talk as properly as, uh, as uh, T.D. Jakes. That's all right. He got value. I got my funds invested in him. What? His funds, his truth. His ruach. His yare, his judgment is mishpatim. Come on, Yisrael. Yeah. Listen at the wisdom of Baruch here. Baruch says here, the heads of you. I want to show you this here. And Baruch, I want to begin here. I will show you the covenant of the book. This is the covenant book. But it says in First Baruch, First Baruch, it says this, First Baruch, chapter 3, verse 14. He tells us to learn, to be taught, Shamats, Lomad. To learn where is chukmah, to learn where is wisdom. There's only one place where wisdom is. It's in the Torah of Yah Yisraya. He said, learn where is wisdom. Where is the funds of the koach? That's what the word strength implies. It is koach. It is power. It is the strength. It is the power of the mind of Yah. What mind is powerful than the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach? When he declared unto death, you have no power. There is no sting. You have no resolute in me, death at all. I take charge and power. Can any of us in our natural mind take power over death? We fear death. We tremble. We get afraid. We are antagonized by death. Can't go around the Torah of Yah. I like this man. I really do. I was in the gym the other day. And the word hedge fund just began to resonate from my bosom. And I began to search the book. What is Yah's hedge fund? Listen to what Baruch says. First Baruch 314. Learn where is wisdom. Where is strength. Where is understanding. That you may also, that you may know also where length of days. See, that's where length of days are. Our days are spent with pleasure. That's sitting around all damn day on your arse. There's a pleasure to life. Not doing a damn thing. Eating and grammatizing. He says what length of days. And life. With the capital L. Where your shoe is. He says where is the lights. The iron or the ma or the or of the eyes. And where shalom is. Where you're satisfied. The question is asked. Who has found out her place? Who has found out the place of wisdom and understanding? You can only find it in one place. The hedge of the Torah. Yeah. Or who has come, this is the font of Yah, who has come into her treasures? Who has come into her hedge? Her gada. That's what that implies in this implication here. Who has come to the treasures? 
of understanding and wisdom. Who has come to the funds that, that hedge us about? That give us strength in the day of perplexity, in the, in the battles of, of great agony. This is where our uh, head lies uh, in the wisdom, in the understanding of Yah, that we may understand the length of days. Uh, it is in the life of Yahshua. It is in the revelation of Yahshua who has found our place, uh, who has come into our treasures. We need to come into the funds of Yah. We need the hedge funds of Yah. And it begins with the wisdom, by wisdom, by understand. Sell it not. Damn their silver, damn their gold. Damn the planetary exploratory committees of the billionaires, damn them. Damn their resources. Who has come into the garden, into the enclosure, the hedge, the strength of Yah's funds? Where are the princes of the heathens? Where are the princes of the heathens become? Well, these are the Bill Gates and the multi-billionaires that are investing uh, in planetary or asteroid uh, investments because they're greedy. They can't be satisfied with a cool billion or two or three or 20. Mr. Buffett and Gates, they're worth 100 billion. That's not even the total gross GDP of, of, of Haiti. The Caribbean islands, very little. And two bastards that have robbed, have gone to nations like Africa, that continent to those nations, and their little babies work just for enough. By the austereness of the damn brutal masters, they have raised up an arm, henchmen and guards to kill each other because they have one feature that is different. Your nose is wider than mine, so you're of that tribe. Your dialect is different than mine because you're from New York and I am from uh, Saskia So you so don't talk like me. And it raised up the armies of death to kill for what? For cobalt. When the damn wicked De Beers that they have no birthright in that damn land of South Africa. These damn foul Jews and they own every damn thing. Uh, and the Oppenheimers uh, and no one says a damn thing about it. Uh. Another damn system of apartheid uh, so rich that a man uh, had to work three or four hundred miles away from home just to damn feed bread to his babies. And his baby dies. His children die. Under this regime of damn terror and death and wickedness of Greece, same thing in America. And nobody says a damn thing. Why? Because the color of their skin is not like those that are in power. Don't tell me it has nothing to do with color. I'm not going to stop talking that way. I'll give a damn if you don't love me. You got a problem with the color of the skin because you're a damn racist pig. Because of the color of those little people's skin, that's it. They don't give a damn about those brown babies in Iraq and Iran. They care about the damn wealth of the oil and the riches. You got a problem with that because you're wicked as hell. And they rob the nations and the land. They corrupt. They supply the guns. Those poor folks there in the tribal warfare of those countries, they have no damn guns. If the Afghanis had no guns, it was the Russians that brought the damn guns to them. They had no guns. There's a dragon that has risen her head. She's a subtle beast, too. It's called China. At least one thing she does, she goes and says, I don't want everything you got. I want to buy everything you got. I help you harness everything you got. I'll build you some roads and all of that. Not these wicked bastards in America. I want every damn thing, and I want you to work for pennies. China says, no, I want to harness your gold. Sell us your oil, please. We'll build your refineries. We're going to charge your price based on the market price. And you pay us this percentage over 100 years. That's how they do it. There was this paleontology. I have the clip. He set out to prove that the Chinese people was of a different order than all nationalities of people. Listen to me. Of race of people. He set out. Brilliant man. Paleontologists, demiologists, to study the DNA of the races of people. There is no such thing as a race. 
We are humans. We are people, all of us. No damn white man or black man. This come from this wicked country. I don't know why I'm going this way, but I need to go this way. And so when he set out to try to find and to prove that Chinese, the people there were of a different DNA composition, he came to one conclusion. There's only one people upon the face of the earth that in that nation of people, their DNA or the DNA of all the people of every kind of hair strand, whether they're straight, blonde, black, blue eyes, green eyes, only one people. There's only one people on the face of the earth that whereby if all the other ethnicities of people were lost from that strand of that DNA, that all people can be reproduced. And when the man, I have the clip, one day I will let you all see it. When he comes to the conclusion, he says, I find that there's only one conclusion, that I must go back to what they call the motherland to Africa because this is where we as a people, we evolved from. This is where our DNA begins. It gave him a whole different attitude of people. And that's what we need to have, an attitude that is right of Yah, of Yisra'ya. Yeah. That their range of skin composition and color and hair texture it is from one extreme to the other. So you don't identify Yisra'ya with these damn twisted concepts. You don't. I'm not afraid to say that. I want someone to talk to me like that, to give me wisdom of the time that I'm in, so that I can, my mind, Yisraya, will be hedged about. If it's not, you're going to take side with your wicked ancestors and say they're right, they're wrong. And that's a fact. I'm not loved by many. There's a sister that right, wrote to me. I want to read the letter. She says to me, I didn't see that because her spirit must be very limited. You're the only true messenger that I've heard in this hour. Well, because of spirits limited. There was a brother that wrote to me. He says, you are the only man that has wisdom I've heard. That's because his spear of things are limited. There are messengers out there. They are mighty men and strong. And they have great strength. Yes, that makes me look like a boy. I have no problem with that. None. That's why I pray, Ya raise up the number of the prophet, the mighty men, that I may wash their feet. They come here, I will wash their feet. I have no problem with that. Not these little nakha, these boys I hear today. These are boys. These are little boys. They have no power to articulate and to speak the power of Yah's Torah. Baruch, where the princes, verse 316, and the heathens come, and such that rule the beasts upon the earth. They that had their pastime with fowls of the air, and they that hoard up, look. See, these are those that love the beasts of the earth. He said, what they hoard up? They hoard up what? Silver? And they hoard up gold. This is what Mr. Planetary Resources are saying. Let's hoard the gold. Let's hoard the silver. I want you to invest. And these are those. He said, the princes, let me read that again. Where are the princes of the heathens? Where are those that are the czar, the leaders of the nations? The word heathens is goim. Goim, a goy. It means nation. Basically, those that are not of the Yisraelite heritage. He said, where are the princes? Where are the leaders? Is not Mr. Buffett a leader of the heathens? Is he not a recognized icon among the world? Is not Mr. Gates that says he's going to eradicate the world of all of the major diseases? There has not been one disease eradicated since the 40s. And that was, uh, what, what's that one? The, oh, talk to me. No, not blue bionic plague. That's not eradicated. It's uh, polio. That's the only one. They can control that. But there has been no major significant drug uh, intervention because they learned, hell, we lost money. The love of money is the root of all evil. You can't even cure the low common cold. We cannot hedge ourselves that uh, we, don't, we, we don't even get colds. We don't wash our hands. We don't keep our hands clean. We put our hands anywhere and put them in our mouths. We can't even do that. 
Because there is money involved. And these are the leaders of the heathens. It is about one thing. It's about gold and silver. And those that tell you to buy gold and silver. They are damn heathens. They are damn fools. To invest in gold and silver. They are damn fools. These are heathen men. They are men that are vile and wicked. They are leaders of the Goyim. They are not the leaders of Yisrael. I tell you to invest. I tell you, invest in the riches of Yah and his wisdom, his understanding, his correction, his musa. Allow Yah's counsel to correct you. Don't be a damn fool. Don't be so arrogant and haste to show your damn immaturity. You don't do that. Your little poor feelings are so easily offended. Damn you, boy. I was telling Uncle Simeon, a young man called me the other day. He says to me, Riyak. Have you heard about this website? I say, and? It is so full of wisdom, it's so, such knowledge. I say, and? I'm getting angry now. You get up there and you roll over across the road, you cutting wood. You lifting up those logs, you may think they're light. You cut a piece of that oak about that big, about that thick. That's not 20 pounds. Be nice if it was 20 pounds. You throw about 50 of them. You probably thrown about 5,000 pounds, two tons of that. You try lifting that and raising that. You're cutting and you're dirty and you're sweaty. And I began to rebuke him. I said, Damn the New World Order. Damn the Illuminati. Damn them all. I said, Y'all raises up everything. I said, Boy, you caught me with this immaturity and this jive. And I'm tired. Jean Valjean said, I'm hungry. You call me with this boy. I say, damn them all. You fear that more than you fear Yah. The very beginning of wisdom is the fear of Yah. And you feel what these damn, I say, they can be too secretive that you know about them. I say, don't waste my time with this boy. You know what he says to me? You know, I said, I knew about this before you were born. You know what he says to me? Can I tell you what he said? He said, thank you, Ray. You're right. I should have known. I should have known when I called you how you were going to answer me. I appreciate that. Very kind. What did you say? I said, all right, my friend. You know, come on. Don't fear them. Don't give a damn about the world. He said, thank you. He said, you're right. What you said to me is right. You're right. I appreciate that. That's how he told me. So sweet. All the way in California. I said, I said, young man, I don't even answer the telephone. And I... You call me with this? See, most people say, well, you're so hard. Now, I'm, I have truth for him. And so rebuking a wise young man, he appreciated that. He didn't say, well, uh, well, you don't know everything. No, I know one thing. Damn the New World Order and the Illuminati and the Club of Rome. The Masonic Order, damn them. I'm not going to get a vintage teach on that. Well, you began with uh, planetary resources. I did that for a reason. See, that began to hoodwink us and be willing us. Sir. That's what. Hold up. Just listen to me. You understand where I'm going? He want us to invest in money now. Send an offering here. You're investing. You're investing in the true gold and the true silver. Send an offering. Hallelujah. Baruch says, where are the princes of the heathens become as such that rule uh, as the beasts of the earth? These are the ones. Now, this is the nature of those that rule as the beasts of the earth. He says, uh, they that have, they that had their pastime. See, this is how they lived. They have their pastime with fowls of the air and they that hoard up silver and gold. They hoard it. They hoard up the money. They got the bank accounts that are bursting at the seam. They got hundreds of millions of thousands of tens of thousands. And they don't give a damn. They are heathens. They are not of the zira of Yisraya. They're not the seed of Yisraya. It says wherein men trust. They trust in gold and silver. That's what heads them about. you have never commanded you to trust in gold and silver. It is not the power of this gold and silver which shall become tankers or rust. When gold rust, you know only you Y'all can do that. The silver is going to become cankered. Which men trust. And made no ends to their getting. They say we're going into space. 
We're going to defy the law of Yah. We're going to defy what they call gravity. Yah gave power unto man to one place. That's earth. To dress it. To subdue it. To make it rich. They have cluttered the space with every kind of wickedness. Britain. France. Russia. America. These are the ones. Every kind of damn satellite to spy on you. To spy on your babies. To spy in your mind. They're practicing subliminal control of your mind and you don't even know because uh, we don't give a damn about truth. These are those that have made their dwelling with the beastly spirit, uh, with Nahash, Tanim. They dwell with the unclean things of the heavens. Oh, I know it says birds, uh, but we're dealing with those angels and those spirits that were thrust out of Hashemayim. Uh, and Yah's going to cause the heavens of the carpet to be opened, uh, and every kind of unclean bird, every kind of foul thing uh, is coming upon man. It is the sense that this metaphor, or it speaks in the sense, come on, Yisraya, that every kind of concept of darkness will penetrate the mind of man. That's what's happening uh, and everybody wants to hoard silver and gold. Uh, they want more money. They can't have enough. And I made five dollars an hour. I said, if I ever get the seven dollars, I'd be happy. Hell, you made seven dollars and you exhaust that. If I ever make ten dollars an hour, you made ten dollars, fifteen, twenty, and you're still not contented. I need more money. I don't need no more money. Yeah, blesses and he enriches and he takes. He feeds me. I'm not looking for no more money. I'm looking for the kingdom. I'm looking for the riches of Yah. I'm going to close in a minute. I want to close because next year about I'm going to teach you the same thing. And maybe the one after that. I got some more articles I'm going to read. All right. So you all know which way I'm going now, don't you? All right then. So you don't have to sit here puzzle and say, oh, he said invest in gold. No. I'm telling you to invest in truth. You all should have seen that every last one of you. These are wicked men. These are men that have made their legion with the beasts, with Nahash, with the demons of hell. To dilute your mind where you cannot obey the truth. That's why they call on Jesus, Lord, God, the damn pagans. These are pagan men. That's what he said. Hallelujah. He calls them heathens. Uh, he said, where are the Zah or the princes of the heathens? Where have they become? And such as that rule, or these are the ones that rule the beasts upon the earth. Uh, they are the ones that their cohabitation is with uh, the spirit of uh, Nahash. And they love ruling over those people because they're not going to buy truth. They're not going to buy truth. They'll buy lies and follow it. Buy gold, uh, get silver, get you some guns. Your gun doesn't mean a damn thing. When this beast began the search you down, it will find you. Ask Mr. Christopher Dorner. You think these little pop guns of the militia and all those that are buying up all the bullets? Uh, hell, we can't even buy bullets to, to kill the foxes and the, and the raccoons around here because these damn fools, uh, they're, they're building up a military fight against Mr. Obama. These are stupid jackasses. When the bullets begin to fly, everybody's rooting to save their heart. Uh, nobody goes stand around with you and fight. Uh, you think somebody's going to die for you? No greater love than this that a friend will leave his life for a friend. And I tell you, when they began to fly, baby, you're going to run. And you're going to throw down your gun. We're not trying to preserve this life. We lay it down. It's no pain to us. Number some, some of you, for, for, if I die again, so what? Why am I going to pick up a nine mil? Uh, and think I'm going to mess with something like, uh, what's that big weapon they have? It's called the, uh, the Barrett. No, 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 the Barrett. The Barrett. Hell, you can sit two miles away and behind a wall three feet thick and they got him. Look at that man that was one of the best sharpshooters in the world. He was a marksman that rivaled no one. He had the longest shots in, the, in, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq. He said one of his shots, he said saw this mother with a grenade in her hand. She had a baby in her hand and he said to, he laid it on her and he laid the bullet right through the mama and the baby killed them both. He said, I had no remorse. I felt nothing. You are damn beasts. 
And yet one that went to war with him, they were out at the range, and the one said, you are a marksman, weren't you? I'm going to send you to hell. And he go, boom. He said, you want to help him? He go, boom, 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 boom. You live by the sword, you're going to die by it. You kill innocent babies, and your babies died without a father. You took the life of fathers uh, that uh, were not going to allow the tyranny of the oppression of the British, the English, uh, and America to oppress and to rob them of their damn resources. Uh, and you kill for these bastards, uh, thinking you're doing service uh, and making me free. You didn't make me free at all. Uh, your sure makes me free. Fight for the rights of America. Your damn lie. They didn't go to Vietnam fighting for the rights of America because the black men came back. Uh, they can hardly see the damn same color with the whites. Uh. Don't tell me you fought for the freedoms here. You fought for the greed uh, of these bastards. Uh. We must recognize that men messed up for these rich, greedy bastards to hedge their funds. Uh. Invest in military in the, in the in the military complex uh, and their sons uh, sending their sons to Canada, getting their sons uh, exempt, uh, sending their sons to college uh, where my little poor men could not uh, get exempt from that. They were sent to Nam. Nobody wants to talk about that. It's wrong, Israel. They're not fighting for the freedom for this country here. There are no freedoms here. We're free in Yahshua. Let them have their government. Let us live quiet in Shalom that they don't mess with us. Because if they want to drop down, the only thing they got to do, if all the, just say all the guns is in the country. Do you understand? You'll bear with me a moment. Chesterfield is 523 square miles. There are more guns here probably per, capita, per, per population than anywhere, just anywhere in the United States. There's only one state whereby everyone has a gun. I don't even care if you're an outlaw, you can own a gun in that state. And that's Alaska. Everybody owns guns in Alaska. Especially those that live out, everybody owns guns. They own multiple guns. And there are probably no more guns in Alaska per population, square mileage, than it is in Chesterfield County. But when they began to drop the bombs, I'm telling you, that little farmer down there, that this farmer is way over here, they don't hardly speak to each other. He's not running to his rescue to save his ass. And when the bombs drop on him, when the bullets drop there, he's not, he's not running over there to fight with him. They're going to lay down their arms. Uh, and these got their 45 Magnuson, their 9 mil, pum, 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 pum. They're going to lay them down. When they began to drop on their eyes, uh, you created fear, I'm creating reality. That's all I'm doing. Uh, it is Yah that fights for us, Yisra'ya. He is our hedge of defense. He's the one that fight the battle for Yisra'ya. He said, let them rise up. That's all right. I'm going to kill them all. He said, damn it, damn it, I'm going to kill their babies. I'm going to kill their mothers. I'm going to kill them all. And damn it, I'm going to pull them up and kill them again. Yeah. He's going to fight our battles. He is our sword. Our sword is the Torah of Yah. That's the sword, the carap of Israel. Yeah, we get this truth uh, and that hedges us about. Hallelujah. One last verse and I'm going to close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 17 of 1st Baruch, I want to read that again. They that have their pastime with the fowls, with the unclean spirits of the air, and they that hoard up silver, they hoard up kesef money, and they hoard up gold, wherein men trust. Are we going to trust in this Yisra'ya? Are we going to trust in the dam of Yoshua HaMashiach? Whereby men trust and make no ends of their gettings. When you defy Yah, when you say we're going into the space, everything that is orbiting that has its rightful place, you understand Yah put it there. He put it there for a reason. And it all helps the balance of all. This is what man has done. Destroy the, the balance of all Yah's creation. He has. And so those meteorites, they're there. Every asteroid is there. The solar system, the complexity. We will never understand that. How do you understand the mind of, of the creator? How do you understand the body? You can't understand that. And when we see Yahshua, we're going to see all things there. See, we're going to know, we're going to know all things. Yeah. And we're going to have a party. We're going to have a shout and fit uh, for probably a million years. And we, can, and we can count that in time. 
We gonna dance at the throat of your Abba. Oh, we have day and night. We gonna dance at your throne. Yes, we will. We're gonna dance in the house of your our Abba. Come on, Yahshua. Come soon. Come. Yosef says he likes the way I sing. I don't know why. I have no coordination. I just like to sing. What I sing, I'm not trying to impress. This last verse I want to close with. We'll continue here on the Shabbat. I will show one of the most prominent hedges we need here in the book of Yeskel 22, Ezekiel. Hear this, Yisraya. Ezekiel chapter 22. We need this in the day of great Sarah, the time we're in the time of trouble. We must be hedged about. Our minds, our desire, our passion. Did the snow stop? Ah, oh, my friend, Akmikaya, we got a little flurries of nothing but wet stuff. I don't know, look, children, I hope we get some. They call for some this evening. I said, yeah, I don't pray nothing. I don't pray we get snow. But yeah, if, if I have a prayer, send a little bit for the babies. So I can go out there and play with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We throw a few snowballs. And not one, two, three feet. Just give us uh, six inches. That will be a lot. You can't even get out with six inches. I shut everything down. I don't mind. I like it like that. Shut it down and have some tough food to eat. I remember Mama when they was... Remember one year they sent us home, I was working when I was working. First thing I wanted to do was I bought a stove and I had my grill. I set that bad boy on the back. I had me some chicken breast. Back then I didn't know how to eat. Stuffed that with shrimp and lobster, crab meat. Marinated that and bathed it in some cayenne sauces. And I'm out snow that deep on my deck grilling that. Right? Just wanted to cook and eat. Nice and cold. And no, I didn't go there trying to get no milk or nothing. I didn't want to go home and get lazy and eat. And that's what I did. And it snowed too. You couldn't get out for days. I was in Charlotte. Give me enough fucking. On the way home, I'm fantasizing about what I'm going to concoct. And here the snow is that deep. I made it home. That's all I needed. Get that grill. I broke it out. And I threw that grill out there. And I marinated that. And I, and I basted it in some butter and all kinds of seasoning. And when she hit that grill, she began to frock. Oh, my, 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 my. I know this is tough. So nothing else, just eat some cake and pies and just eat. Last verse here. <clears throat> here in Yeskel 2230. <clears throat> he says, I and I sought, I bore cash. I desired with patience. Ezekiel 2230. He said, Yah said, I sought for a man among Yisraya and Ish, man of strength. This hedge. He said, a man that should make up the hedge. We need a hedge. I'm glad that Yahshua is that man. When he found no man, he found Yahshua. He said, a man that should make up the gade, the hedge. We need someone. And Yahshua is the one. And stand in the ferrets, in the gap before me. For the land that I shall not destroy it, but I found none. I'm going to stop there for the day. He found none. I'm glad when he looked, he sees the tremendous power of the testimony of Yahshua Hamashir resonating from our bosom. He said, look for a man among Israel to hedge my people with truth. To teach them knowledge and wisdom, understanding. He said that, that, that the breach or the ferrets, and we know what a breach is, it caused everything to flow. When we breach the Torah of Yah, we allow every kind of spirit to flow into our minds. He said, I found none. Lord, there was not one. But I'm glad he had one. His name is Yahshua Hamashiach. And greater is the power of the testament of Yahshua Hamashiach in me uh, than all of the forces of hell uh, that rises up against me uh, to dismantle 
my hedge fund. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. May the strength of Yah, we hope this simple. No, I'm not going to say that. I'll leave that to Zakin. Yaramiya, we pray that Yah's truth corrected you, rebuked you, and set your mind in order. You may seek out to Him above all things. That you may delight in Yah's counsel and your Shur Hamashiach. Again, we greet you all on this Shabbat. This is a beautiful day. It's a little chilly. It's going to get down to 20 some degrees. And so I was hoping that we get a little snow for my little ones. I know. But whatever Yah's will, His pleasure. If we delight ourselves in Him, He will give us better desire of our hearts. So I delight in you, Yah. Snow for the babies. Hallelujah. How about that? We have faith, we delight in him, he gives us the very yeah. desires of our heart. Yeah, Barak, you all yes, sir. Yeah, his riches rest upon you all. The message on the day for his Ahava, his loving kindness, let us stand to our feet, Israel. Yeah. Let us be remembrance of the hedge of Almighty Yahweh. Not only is it a place where we could put all of our treasures and our hopes, our aspirations in, and we reap the rewards of that, but it also provides us with privacy, Israel. Yeah. Yahweh, he's not going to allow the enemy to rape our minds, to take his Torah out of our lives. He has encamped us. He has protected us. And he's not going to let it happen from whether it's inside the hedge or outside the hedge. Yahweh, he's going to remove those that cause the insurrections. And he's also going to destroy those that try to uh, pursue us, Israel. So Yahweh, he's our protection. He has our, he's our help. And he truly is our Abba. Hallelujah. Abu Yahweh, we brought you for this day. You have given us Yahweh. We know you have made this day anew. And we will never see this day again, Abba Yahweh. So while today is today, we shall barak you. We shall lift up your name, Abba Yahweh. We give you told out for Yahshua, Hamashiach. We do barak those that listen by via of live stream. And again, those that have traveled near and far, Abba Yahweh. Take them home safely, Abba Yahweh. Give your beloved rest on this beautiful Shabbaton, Abba Yahweh. And as we lift up the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we shall barak you for everything, for all things. In the precious my name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare, hallelujah, 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 Yahweh. Yahweh, Yisra'ya, Ko Yisra'ya, hallelujah.